Tom Bombadil is probably Tolkien's biggest mystery in Middle Earth. He probably tops the list. Because we have no idea what he is, where he comes from, what race he belongs to. We do know that he was very powerful. Because in the Lord of the Rings, and I think it's in chapter, I forgot which chapter it is, doesn't matter. Um, in the Fellowship of the Ring, the book, now he's left out of the movies. When he had the, when Bilbo, sorry, when Frodo put on the ring, Tom could see him. Nobody else could. Then when Frodo gave Tom the ring and he put it on, he didn't turn visible. He flicked it up in the air and it disappeared. Then suddenly it appeared in his hand and he gave it back to Frodo. So Tom is a strange character. Tom has a bad habit of tripping through the forest singing songs. And even when he, for instance, the hobbits get caught by Old Man Willow, which happens in the movie where Treebeard saves him, but in the book it happens here, in the old forest near the, near the Shire. And he sings a song to release the hobbits from Old Man Willow. And later on, when the hobbits get caught by the Barrow Whites, now a barrow is a mound with a rock on top of it, right, where people are buried underneath, Ancient people were buried there and there were evil ghosts that lived in them. The hobbits get caught by a barrow white. Tom rescues them with a song. <laughs> and he's married to a lady called Goldberry who's very beautiful. But she is called the River Daughter. Now, who married them, we don't know. And she's just as mysterious as Tom is because they don't fit into what we call the box. Is that why they were left out of the movie completely? They're too, well, too much of an enigma. Out of the movie because they couldn't fit them in. Tolkien admits he just added those couple of chapters, you know, the old forest and in the house of Tom Bombadil, mm. he added, and, and, and then on the Barrow Downs, three chapters, he added three chapters just to give the hobbits an adventure on their way. Oh, that's a filler. It's a filler, basically. <laughs> he admits that. That's terrible. And the original Tom Bombadil poem came out in 1936, <laughs> which is before The Hobbit was even published. He was there before The Dark Lord came. So there's a lot of conjecture over who is he. Some people believe that he is Aru. Now, Aru is the equivalent of God. Some people say that he's one of the Valar. One of the Valar are basically, which we'll talk about soon, are basically the archangels created by God. And other people say he's a Maya. The Maya was the lower order of Valar, basically angels. But he doesn't fit. You can always find a fault in that description of how he doesn't really fit it. Right, so... In Tolkien's very earliest writings, he talked about forest sprites and other forest spirits. And some people say that Tom probably fits into that category. But later on, when the Silmarillion was published, those sort of part, those parts were left out. So, like I said before, Tolkien had different ver earlier versions. And as years went by, he rewrote a lot of the stuff. A lot of his early writings were very fairy-like, fairy story-like. Later on, it was more sort of epic fantasy. I'm going to introduce to you Charlie. Thank you, Colin. And, oh, the book, oh, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, was published in 1962. It was illustrated by Pauline Baines, who also did all the illustrations for the Narnia books. Um, there are later versions. So The Adventures of Tom Bombadil was published as, as a book was published in 1962, but there's only two poems in there about Tom. There's more poems in The Lord of the Rings in those three chapters I mentioned 
than there is in this book. But there is a lot of poems about Hobbit folklore. Don't forget Mulips. What were the Mulips? That's a later version of the same book. And as you can see, they always had him with the, the yellow boots, the yellow pants, the blue jacket, the brown hat, but the swan feather. 